Well, there you go. <laughs> What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride chair extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like, hit that subscribe, for a favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in, buckle in, and let's go. Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, Kim, folks, what are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Man, I think Kamala Harris really think we're stupid. I'm for real, for real. I'm not trying to be hyperbolic and all that. I really think she's think we're stupid, really. Now, she had a campaign. I think in uh, Arizona and she posted a picture. The white house posted a picture of her coming out the plane with all these people here. Come to find out it was goddamn AI. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's nobody. Nobody else that was at this so-called campaign to meet her at the airplane, at the airplane hangar, nobody posted any footage. Only this picture here. Only from the White House. Nobody else that was there posted a picture on Twitter, on X, on Facebook, nowhere. She think we're stupid. The first part of this issue that should be articulated is AI is kind of a fancy thing. It's first of all, it's two letters. It means <laughs> artificial intelligence. But ultimately what it is, is it's about machine learning. She also think that we're not paying attention. Okay. We know she'll have no policies. She have no policies on her website. Nothing like that. Right. She's at the campaign trail and she says this. On tips for service and hospitality workers. God damn it. Isn't it the same thing that Donald Trump said? I posted a video about this a few weeks ago. This is Donald Trump's policy. And she's over here straight jacking Donald Trump. Because when I get to office, we are going to not charge taxes on tips. This Trump idea is unrealistic. But well, here's the actual deal with what Trump is suggesting. The all caps tax relief are actually backdoor ways to give rich people big tax breaks. Smart enough to know the difference between, as they said, real solutions and wild campaign promises from a convicted felon. Mm. That seems seems a little bit impractical. Out of taxes on tips is just kind of silliness. The Biden campaign kind of scoffs at this idea as well. We have no original ideas. Nothing. Nothing at all. Last night, we saw a big speech in Nevada by uh, Kamala Harris, and she came out for no tax on tips. And eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. Where have I heard that before? This is just one of those economic policies that will go to the heart of doing something directly for people that they can feel. She had a focus on the middle class, and, and so eliminating uh, taxes on tips uh, will help people that go to work every day and bust their butts uh, to keep food on the table, clothes on their back. To make America so make America. We're going to make America great again. She must think we're really stupid. For real. For real, for real. I mean, goddamn. I know some of y'all going to vote Democrat, but goddamn, we are not stupid. What the hell? You know, they're having a bad week. Ever since that stolen value story came out about Timmy, it's been going down here from there. They've been trying to play defense for the last week or so. So 
there's that window of opportunity there. People say we never knew he was going forward. Yeah, he knew he was going forward. Had he gotten his orders yet? No, at that time he had not. Mm. Uh, as far as being a command sergeant major, he, as soon as he retired, or let, 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 I'm going to go with the term retired, which he did, which and he was mm -hmm. eligible after 20 years to get a full retirement, uh, he was taken out of the academy at that time. Uh, here's another thing about... Well, Sergeant Major, I, I do want to hear that... that I, I do want to hear what you have to say, Sergeant Major. Um, I, I know I want to be sensitive of, of your time and your, your audio is beginning to break up just a little bit. But I do want to thank you because I think you've clarified a lot for people and given more information. The question now is how the voters will evaluate it. Sergeant Major, Doug, Julian, thank you so much. And there's people out here who's going to call them out on it, like J.D. Vance. You uh, talked about one of the things that he said, weapons of war. He was talking in a campaign stop about, yeah. he was trying to talk about gun control. Sure. And he said, weapons of war I carried in war. Uh, I will say that the Harris Walls campaign did say that the governor misspoke there. Sure. Do you Mi accept that? He misspoke. Another word is that he lied about it. And he didn't correct the record for 15 years until he was put under political pressure because I called it out, Dana. Whatever you want to call it, a misspeaking or a lie, I think Tim Walz should have to correct the record. Now, you pointed out a soldier who defended his service. There have been a number of soldiers who served with Tim Walz who have criticized him on the exact same grounds that I have because it's not right to misstate or to embellish what you've done. And I think that's what he did. Oh, oh, now all of a sudden he misspoke. Right, right. Now he misspoke. He'd been running that story for 15 years and now he misspoke. As soon as they put the political pressure on him, he misspoke. Right, right. JD Vance's been doing interviews with, with Dana Bash and he also went on, uh, this guy's, uh, John McCall on ABC and he is tearing them up. He's not afraid of the the reporters. He's not afraid of interviews, just like Donald Trump. Bring them on. The more you do it, the more practice you have. Unlike Kamala, she's scared. Unlike Timmy, he's scared. Let's let's take a look at Minnesota's governor, Timmy Waltz, and what his proud moment is. Today, Governor Tim Walz signed an executive order providing legal protection to those who come to Minnesota for gender-affirming health care. John Croman joins us now live from the Capitol with more about what prompted today's action. Hi, John. Hey, Rena, this comes at a time when a lot of other states are passing bills that would restrict gender-affirming care or outlaw it for minors. And there's actually a bill here pending at the legislature here at the Capitol that would make Minnesota sort of a trans care refuge state. Uh, but the governor did not want to wait for that to get to his desk. When our children tell us who they are, it is our job as grown-ups to listen and to believe them. It was an event that had all the trappings of a bill signing ceremony, a huge crowd of lawmakers, advocates and families, in this case, gathered in support of legal protections for people seeking gender affirming care for what themselves or their children. But the paper Governor Walls signed go. was an executive order. His action comes at a time when transgender persons across the nation feel under siege. This is life threatening. We'll make sure that Minnesota's place as a welcoming, loving, neighborly state where you are welcome and will be free of persecution or anything else that we're trying to see in some other states. So he wants to have a safe haven for trans, right? No problem. But now J.D. Vance is going to call him out on it. And, and finally, before you go, we commit to this race to kind of sticking to the facts. I mean, I heard Donald Trump uh, give, give this speech in, in Montana he just gave. And uh, he, he said that Tim Walls has signed a letter letting the state kidnap children uh, to change their, their gender, that allowing pedophiles to claim, you know, I mean... To, to, to be exempt from crimes? I mean, this is not true. It's not remotely true. Well, what President Trump said, and I haven't watched what, the whole rally. What, what he said was not true. What President Trump said, John, is that Tim Waltz has supported 
taking children from their parents if the parents don't consent to gender reassignment. That is crazy. And by the way, Tim Waltz gets on his high horse about mind your own damn business. One way of minding your own damn business, John, is to not try to take my children away from me he if I have different moral views than you. He has not allowing your state to kidnap they have, uh, children they, to change their how would you, identity. What I just explained to you, I would describe as kidnapping, John. He has That's absolutely crazy. done this stuff. It's not crazy. John, come on. It's not what you he's should not. You should not be able to take people's children away from them. And that's not what he's proposed. If you disagree with decisions about gender reassignment, yes, he has proposed that, John. He absolutely has. And you see, the reporter is trying to cover for Timmy and Kamala. Every time he's trying to explain it, he's trying to cut them. So now he ain't saying like that. It's ridiculous. And it's in the bill. John, it's in the bill. Campaign brought up. I was asking about Donald Trump. No, I'm saying the, the, thank you, fair, thank you. But the Harris, but John, the Harris campaign. What are their policy views? They don't have a policy position on their website. Should she sit down and answer tough questions with you? Yes, I think she should. Absolutely. Where we're, is she? Well, but uh, we, we, we respect we, the American we, we people hope, enough. We hope she'll be on the show soon. I hope so thank too, you. John, because the person who wants to be our president ought to sit down for some tough interviews. I'm willing to do it, and I wish she would too. You see how they treat JD Vance, and he's not scared. He is serving them up with sides in a biscuit. J.D. Vance did two interviews back-to-back -back with Dana Bash and John McCall. Back-to-back. -back. Where is Kamala? I should note our show has reached out to the Harris Walls campaign for comment and have not heard back. Kamala Harris has been the nominee for three weeks. She hasn't sat down for a real Believe interview. Believe me, we are asking. I, and, and you're and not going to get but, a but, disagreement but, but, there. But the point is, Dana, you've got me for 15 minutes or however long you have me. Where is Timmy? Timmy, you have to stand on your record, too. Talk about people are weird. You look like a, um, I can't say it on YouTube because I already got a flag already. But look at this guy here. You look like a type. Okay? You need to be on somebody's register right now. You look like the type. It's funny that J.D. Vance called him out on how he greeted his wife on the day he was getting, um, um, nominee for the vice president and let's take a look <laughs> he shook his wife's hand like a homie you're saying tim walls doesn't have affection for his wife i don't even understand that i said that he acted weird which he did on a national stage in front of his wife and in front of millions of americans who presumably were watching at home and i think that it's projection there's no one that he keeps advocating for this lifestyle Something with Timmy. And I believe something's going to come out. It's going to be a big October surprise. And it's going to be because of Timmy. We'll see. Anyway, that's my thoughts for the day. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends. And tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right all right till next time guys i'll see you again and all you liberals get off my lawn